educate a man is to educate an individual, but to educate a woman is to educate a nation. In Kenya's arid and semi-arid areas, the road to education for many women is often treacherous and lined with obstacles. A history of neglect, conflict and harsh climate has combined to produce grim education statistics in the region. Since the introduction of the 844 system in 1987, only one student from northeastern province has attained an A in the KCSE exams. Only 6% of women in Mandera, 8% of women in Turkana and 9% of women in Wajir can read and write. This pales in comparison with an average national female literacy of 74%. For a child born in northern Kenya, the risk of dropping out of school is double that of the average Kenyan child. While the introduction of free primary schooling changed the fortunes for students from these arid counties, myriads of challenges still abound. Um, globally, if you look at the global picture, there are about six to seven million children who are out of school. Two thirds of those are said to be girls. Uh, Kenya has taken very bold steps to address this situation by introducing free primary education, which basically has raised enrollment rates in this country to 109%. Um, the situation is really good across the country. But when you look at the disparities between regions and between different groups, pastoralists, sedentary communities, you will see glaring inequities, which to us in UNICEF is a fundamental issue because it's a violation of the rights of the child if they cannot access education equally across the board. In my family, we are pastoralists and we keep on moving from one place to another. So it has really been hard to to like uh, attend school all the days. Girls in northern Kenya, the enrollment rate nationally, as I said, is 109% now. If you look at northern Kenya across the districts, it's about 40% or below for some situations. If you look at girls specifically, the scenario is less than 30%. So for every 100 girls that are ought to be in school, primary schooling, you only have 30% of these girls in school. In my class, we were, we were 14 girls, and the boys were 42. A girl in Keio has 63 times more chances to be in secondary schooling than a girl in Marsabit. Girls are traditionally marginalized um, in northern Kenya. Girls don't get the same opportunities as boys. Uh, parents would like to have the boys go to school, but to have the girls get married. I think uh, the message we are sending is that a girl can actually be an asset to society through education. A girl can be married and yet a professional. And so that is the message we are sending to girls. The challenge now centers on access to post-primary education. The high and rising cost of education at this level has locked out many deserving students. With each progression, more students are locked out of the education system. As a result, students from arid counties are poorly represented in university admissions. When you combine cultural hindrances, poor quality at primary level, low participation by these girls in classes, the low number of teachers that are there, the chances of surviving through primary school become slimmer for girls. Once you get to secondary schooling, again the biggest hindrance is the poor foundation of primary schooling, the very low transition from secondary to primary to secondary schooling, and similarly the lack of confidence for children who are not prepared enough to engage in secondary education. These again combined give you a very low performance after secondary schooling. So the results are significantly lower for children from the north and particularly so for girls.
This, in turn, leads to insufficient numbers of professionals from the region who can contribute to the development of their counties and the country in general. Despite Kenya having 53 public and private universities, the entire northern Kenya, stretching from West Pokot to Tana River, does not have a single university. In my days, um, we depended most on bursaries from the government, and in my case, uh, a bursary from the Samburu County Council. It was uh, interesting because um, in my Form 1 to Form 4, I would receive in a year 247 shillings as, as a bursary towards my education at the Alliance High School. And so, although I didn't get the opportunity that Nokia is giving these students now, I got a similar opportunity at my time to finish my school six, to go to university, to become a lawyer and now a judge. In 2010, the Northern Kenya Education Trust was established to support access to quality education for students from the arid counties of Kenya. The work of this trust covers counties of Turkana, West Pokot, Baringo, Samburu, Isiolo, Marsabit, Mandera, Wajir, Garissa, Tana River, Lamu, Kajiado and Narok. The Trust mobilizes financial and technical resources to promote quality education in these regions and to help bright but needy students, particularly girls, access and complete their secondary and higher education. In January 2011, the Trust took over the administration of the successful UNICEF-supported scholarship scheme for girls from Northeastern Province. Uh, getting more people who have particularly gained uh, to gain skills in tertiary and university education is, is what we're aiming for. Um, we do have also programs to help with you know, uh, secondary school. So the overall objective of the trust is to improve education in those particular areas. But yeah, I think in the short term, we think uh, supporting uh, girls and women in particular will pay higher dividends, but it is for improvement of education across the arid lands and the pastoral communities. This is the beginning of a journey, a journey to restore hope and ambition, an opportunity to dream. As more and more children go to school, a bright future can be ensured with a concerted effort of friends and partners across the world. The chance is now to take the step forward and ensure these children have a bright future. All youngsters are hungry for education. Give it to them. I mean, you look at some of the other countries. Did we ever think the Far East and India would be where they are today? Never. Okay, Africa is next on the list and it's the young people who will do it. So give them a chance to get educated and we'll be up there too. A peaceful future full of aspirations, dignity and prosperity. This is the work of education. <laughs>